pine trees, bumblebees, and Swiss cheese, what do these all have in common? It's carbon. Carbon can be found almost everywhere. Find out just how important carbon is to life on Earth next on Real World. Carbon is not only the fourth most abundant element in the universe, it's also one of the essential building blocks of life. It's in our bodies and in our food. But what is carbon anyway? Carbon is one of the basic building blocks of life on Earth. It's found all over the place, like in animals, plants, and it's also found in non-living material, like rocks and the atmosphere. Carbon is important um, for many reasons, including providing lots of the power that we use. It's found in coal, it's found in fossil fuels, it's found really in all of our main uh, sources of energy. We can find carbon in many different types of source pools. Um, there's a lot of carbon in the ocean. That's actually one of our main carbon pools on our planet. Uh, you can find carbon in the atmosphere as uh, different gases, such as carbon dioxide, and you find lots of carbon um, in the terrestrial areas, so uh, in plants, in trees, or in soils. So what else do we know about this carbon cycle? So the carbon cycle is um, the cycle of where carbon goes, and also how carbon moves from one pool into a different one. Carbon cycle is a system this earth process that transfers carbon from the plant material to the atmosphere, back to the plant material, from the oceans to the atmosphere, back to the oceans, and from far below ground, from fossilized carbon pools to the atmosphere. So fast-moving carbon, for example, is what gets stored in plants. You have photosynthesis that happens, which is essentially really a mechanism by which plants are able to absorb carbon from uh, the atmosphere and they essentially use the carbon to make sugar which is the basis of all carbohydrates and that carbon that's fixed there in these plants is fast carbon. Slower carbon will refer to over time sort of the integration of perhaps atmospheric carbon into the ocean and down into the depths of the ocean. One manner in which it's transferred from the atmosphere to the oceans might be um, through the photosynthesis um, that's done by plankton in the ocean, and then the consumption of that plankton by higher level species, um, and then the eventual decay of some of that organic material, those species will to some extent decay and be transferred to the bottom of the ocean where the carbon that used to be part of those species gets locked away um, in ocean sediments. Humans have a huge impact on the carbon cycle um, because essentially we are changing how it is. We are taking a lot of these um, pools of slow carbon um, and burning it and putting it into the atmosphere. So we're really changing where the carbon is and that has some big implications. Um, so we're not really changing how much carbon is there. The amount of carbon is always the same, but what we're changing is where it is and what form it's in. So if you put the carbon, the, take the slow carbon, you burn it, and you put it in the atmosphere, it gets expanded, and the atmosphere is a much smaller pool than the ocean is, for example, or our terrestrial reservoirs are. Humans have a really important role in the carbon cycle, but how does NASA measure carbon as it moves? We have um, different ways of measuring carbon. Um, for example, we work on uh, measuring the carbon that's stored in trees. And to do that, we use different types of instruments. We do field work and we also use satellite data. Um, for example, data from uh, some new satellites like ISET-2 and JEDI. One way we do those measurements is with satellite imagery or satellite uh, estimates. We use LiDAR instruments that are in space that are pointed down at the Earth, that shoot LiDAR pulses towards the Earth and measure the time that it takes for those pulses to return to the satellite sensor. From those pieces of information, we can learn about the height of forests and other structural characteristics of the forest canopies. In addition to using the satellite data, we also have to do field work. Uh, we go in the field and we measure what species it is. We get the biometry of a tree, which is a biometry is measuring of the living things. 
We take a tape and we put it around the tree and we measure the circumference, measure the height of a tree, um, and then we compare that to what we're getting from the satellite. We would like to get a better understanding of where carbon exists on the landscape. Carbon really is essential to all life as we know it. And we can see the carbon cycle in motion thanks to NASA's eyes in the sky, on the ground, and in space. See you next time on Real World.